In this video, we'll be preparing the production budget. In our previous video, we completed a sales budget, the first budget completed in the master budget process. The sales budget estimates the number of units the company is expected to sell and the sales revenue they will earn. In our example for Grattman Manufacturing, we use the information provided about sales estimates to produce the sales budget for the first three months and the quarter. Once management has estimated how many units they are expected to sell, they can determine the number of units they need to produce. They do that by producing the production budget. What is a production budget? The production budget shows the number of units the company must produce, not only to meet expected sales, but also to ensure the company has safety stock. Safety stock is inventory which is kept on hand to either meet demand that is higher than expected or to allow for production issues, such as machine breakdowns. Management does this by estimating the desired level of ending inventory when planning for production. Let's continue with our example of Grattman Manufacturing to demonstrate the preparation of the production budget. Grattman Manufacturing believes it can meet its future sales requirements by maintaining an ending inventory that is equal to 40% of next month's budgeted sales volume. This will ensure that the sales department has enough inventory on hand for required orders they expect to receive and any unusual demand requirements. This is exactly what is on hand on January 1st. Prepare the production budget for the first three months and the quarter. Step one is to determine the production requirements formula. We start with the number of units we expect to sell in the current period, which is the estimated unit sales. We add in the safety stock, called the desired ending inventory, that we need on hand to meet unusual demand requirements. Estimated unit sales plus the desired ending inventory is equal to the total units needed for the period. From that, we deduct the inventory which is on hand at the beginning of the period, our beginning inventory in units to determine the number of units we must produce in order to meet our sales and safety stock needs. Now that we have the formula to determine the level of production required, we can move on to step two, which is to prepare the production budget chart. We'll start with the title, including the company name, Grattman Manufacturing, the name of the budget, production budget, and the date for the quarter ended March 31st. We then move on and add the necessary columns. Since we are completing the budget for the months and the quarter, we have one column for the description, three columns for the months, and one column for the quarter, a total of five columns. The headings are the description, each of the months, January, February, March, and finally the total column, which here is called first quarter. We can now use our formula from step one. Estimated unit sales plus desired ending inventory is equal to total units needed. Total units needed minus beginning inventory in units is equal to units to produce. We're going to take this formula and apply it to our chart in the description column. Estimated unit sales in the first row. Desired ending inventory in the second row. Added together, they equal the total units needed, our subtotal in the third row. Now deduct the beginning inventory in units in the fourth row to get the units to produce in the fifth row. We need to start by filling out the first row, the estimated unit sales, which we'll get from, of course, the sales budget we already completed. Note that we use the estimated unit sales, the first row, from the sales budget. We therefore use January, 8,000 units, February, 9,000 units, March, 9,500 units, and first quarter, 26,500 units. We'll transfer the information into the first row of our production budget, January 8,000, February 9,000, March 9,500, and first quarter 26,500. We now need the desired ending inventory. This is determined by management based on what they consider the most appropriate safety stock to have on hand at the end of every month. In this case, Grattman Manufacturing believes that they can meet their future sales requirements by maintaining an ending inventory that is equal to 40% of the next month's budgeted sales volume. But what exactly does this mean? It means that in January, management believes that the appropriate level of ending inventory, their desired ending inventory, is equal to 40% of the sales they expect in February. This means that management will take the 9,000 units required in February, multiply it by 40% to determine the ending inventory they will need in January. 9,000 units multiplied by 40% is equal to 3,600 units. That's what management wants to have on hand at the end of January. This is January's desired ending inventory. For February, we take 40% of March's sales volume, 
9,500 units times 40%, which is equal to 3,800 units as the desired ending inventory for February. But, but what about March? We can't take 40% of the first quarter's sales volume because the first quarter's sales volume is all the units for all three months. Instead, we need to consider the information from the original question. Management at Gratman provided the estimate, also called budgeted, units sold for April. It's this estimated unit sales for April, 9,600 units, that we need in order to determine the desired ending inventory for March. If we simply add another column to the production budget, one that will be used only when required, we can see that the desired ending inventory for March is calculated as 40% of April's estimated unit sales. 9,600 units multiplied by 40% is equal to 3,840 units, which is March's desired ending inventory. We can now hide the April column, well, at least until we need it again. What about the desired ending inventory for the first quarter? Can we simply add up the January, February, and March desired ending inventory to determine that? And the answer is absolutely not. Consider that the quarter covers the period from January 1st to March 31st, with March 31st as the last day in the first quarter. Given that, the ending inventory for the quarter is equal to the ending inventory for March which is 3,840 units. It's important to recognize that the quarter is a period of time, similar to a month, but made up of three months, which is why the desired ending inventory for March is equal to the desired ending inventory for the first quarter, which ends on the same day in March, March 31st. We can now continue with our formula by adding the estimated unit sales and the desired ending inventory to obtain the total units needed. We can imagine the formula on the chart also, adding the estimated unit sales and the desired ending inventory for each month and the first quarter. For January, 8,000 units plus 3,600 units is equal to 11,600 units needed. For February, 9,000 units plus 3,800 units is equal to 12,800 units needed. For March, 9,500 units plus 3,840 units is equal to 13,340 units needed. Finally, for the first quarter, 26,500 units plus 3,840 units is equal to 30,340 units needed. We'll now continue with the formula. We need to deduct the beginning inventory in units from the total units needed. That's because the beginning inventory is already on the shelf and must be deducted since we don't need to produce what we already have. The beginning inventory for one period is equal to the closing inventory from the prior period. For example, the beginning inventory on February 1st is the closing inventory from January 31st, the end of the prior month. Therefore, beginning inventory for February is 3,600 units, which is the desired ending inventory for January. The beginning inventory for March is therefore the desired ending inventory for February, which would be 3,800 units. We now have the beginning inventory for both February and March. But what about the beginning inventory for January? How are we supposed to calculate it? Particularly because there's no information provided in the question for December of the prior year. We were given one piece of information. Remember that we were told that the desired ending inventory of 40% of the next month's budgeted sales volume was required to ensure that the sales department would have enough inventory on hand for the sales orders they expect to receive. In addition, we were told that this is exactly what was on hand on January 1st. So we know that on January 1st, the beginning inventory balance was exactly equal to the December's desired ending inventory. If we now add an additional column for December at the start of the chart, we can do some calculations. We don't know what the estimated unit sales were for December, but we do know that December's desired ending inventory was 40% of the estimated sales volume in January. That's 8,000 units multiplied by 40%, which is equal to 3,200 units, which is December's desired ending inventory. We know that December's desired inventory is equal to January's beginning inventory, which is 3,200 units. 
we now know January's beginning inventory. We can now hide away the column that we created for December. Well, at least until we need it again. What about the first quarter's opening inventory? Recall that the first quarter covers the period from January 1st to March 31st and that January 1st is the first day of the quarter. Therefore, opening inventory for the quarter is identical to the opening inventory for the month of January. So opening inventory for the first quarter is 3,200 units. We can now complete the formula for calculating units to produce by deducting the beginning inventory in units from the total units needed to determine the units to produce. As you can see on the chart, we can apply the formula to each month and the first quarter. For January, 11,600 units minus 3,200 units is equal to 8,400 units. That's the number of units we need to produce in January. For February, 12,800 units minus 3,600 units is equal to 9,200 units. For March, 13,340 units minus 3,800 units is equal to 9,540 units. And for the first quarter, 30,340 units minus 3,200 units is equal to 27,140 units. We can do a quick final check to ensure our calculations are correct. By adding the units to produce for January, February, and March, we can see if it equals the units to produce for the first quarter. 8,400 units plus 9,200 units plus 9,540 units is equal to 27,140 units, so we know our chart works perfectly. We have now completed the second operating budget in the master budget process. As always, thanks so much for watching.